<clears throat> the time I abused... The time I abused my gay privilege in high school. Hey everybody, it's Prince of Queens, and this is another one of those story time videos. I'm actually working on scripting some videos, so those will be up soon, and they will be better than these in a certain sense, but a lot of people enjoy my improv story time videos, and this is a particularly interesting story as it relates to social justice and the left in general. You see... I went to a high school that was very small. It was a public school that was an alternative school. And it was basically where everybody who didn't feel like they wanted to go to a big, awful high school ended up going. Often it was kids that were thinking of dropping out or who were being bullied a lot, that kind of a thing. It was very hippie, far leftist. We had a teacher who was certainly some type of Marxist. He was always rallying students and talking about Nicaragua and East Timor and all of the horrible things that the United States did and blah, 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 blah. And oh, there's some more details about that guy, but that was the general environment of this school. So a lot of homosexual kids went there in the 1990s when it was still really hard to be openly homosexual in school, and I was one of them. I went to a particularly rough middle school. There was uh, probably over a thousand students at my school, and they were not very nice in general. It was a very hostile environment, a extremely hostile. My school was about 80% black, and the kids that were not from the neighborhood were all bussed in. I was one of those for gifted programs, and we were mostly white and Asian. And the students that were local dramatically resented us because we were given special classes, and the teachers were a lot better, and we were all smart and well-behaved. And so they thought that we were stuck up, which is kind of understandable now that I think about it, you know? I've been thinking that for a while, but it took me a little while to really think about how weird of a situation that actually was. Like, if you're going to have a gifted program, why do you need to surround it with kids so that get to feel like they aren't special, you know, and also get to see that it's mostly white and Asian students? It just seems like a recipe for resentment, and that is entirely what it was. That's entirely what I experienced. And the other thing was that I was loud and I was large. I was particularly tall and I was chubby and I was also about as gay sounding as I am now because I grew up in the gay neighborhood of Seattle and I knew a number of gay people starting when I was younger because I had a guy living in my house who was openly homosexual and he had a lot of friends come over and stuff. And I actually ended up looking up to him a lot because he was the only male that my sisters and my mother particularly liked all that well. And he was actually a really cool guy. I liked him a lot. So I kind of ended up picking up a lot of speaking patterns from those types of people and also just being surrounded by women and not really idolizing my father when I was a kid, because I didn't really understand him at all, and my mother trained me to hate him. So I ended up sounding very gay, and at the middle school, I was picked on dramatically. I was very picked on, and I, I, I did a pretty good job defending myself, both verbally and in the few physical altercations that I got into. So uh, I didn't get a whole bunch of crap. It could have been a lot worse, but the black students that were in the non-super gifted program, a number of them actually liked me because I treated them like human beings. I was nice to them. I was funny to them. If somebody tried to make fun of me, like there was this one girl who said, uh, y'all talk, you talk like a F word. You talk like a maggot, you know? And I was like, but, but it wasn't just that. She's, it was more like it, that guy over there, he, he sounds like a maggot. And so I was like, shut up. How long have you been smoking since you was nine? Listen to your voice or something like that. And all the kids were like, ha ha, <laughs> you know. So they started liking me a little bit after that type of a thing. But 
still, I realized that I could not go to the big high school. I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't deal with getting up so early. Like, those schools started at 745, and the alternative school didn't have classes any earlier than 9. So I knew that I was going to be tired all the time, and being tired all the time makes it so that you can't really lose weight. You feel hungry all the time, and you don't really produce muscle, because I just couldn't get up at that time. I was one of those types of young people. So I ended up going to the alternative school and it was really great. Actually, I had a really great first year. I made friends with the most popular, prettiest girl and a number of her friends. Her name was Megan and Megan, everybody had a crush on Megan. And I guess she thought I was funny and cool. Maybe she wanted to have a token gay friend and I was cooler than the other guys or something. I'm not really sure, especially considering I'm a, I was a freshman at the time. And so I got used to being very popular at my school. And it was easy because nobody got picked on at my school for anything. Like, if anybody was ever particularly mean to a kid, the whole community of the school, and I do say community because all of the teachers knew the students and we referred to each other by the first name basis, the whole community if there was if there ever was an instance of egregious bullying even just verbally cuz i don't even think there really were physical fights they were very small if there were the the community would get really really upset about it and very very much chastise the student who had done something particularly mean and that actually happened to me i was picking on this guy who is straight to a certain degree he kind of deserved it. He accidentally, like, kicked my friend in the neck. He wasn't trying to. He was just practicing his martial arts, but he, like, seriously got my friend in the neck, and so I was very mad about it. So I I think I wrote on the walls that I wrote his name, and I said, he sucks, and whatever, you know, and then all these people were like, oh, that's so awful that you would do that. You should have had a peer mediation, and blah, blah. I, I was shamed so hard for that. Like, all these people thought that I was just this terrible person for a while, and they didn't quite understand why I had the reaction that I did. They weren't really properly cool about it, and I think the reason why was because nobody really liked that kid. He was really, really nerdy and show-off-y, and he thought he was all that in every type of way, but he was really just kind of annoying. Um, so I, I it was weird though, because I ended up becoming friends with him eventually, and it was because we got a ping pong table, and he was one of the best ping pong players. I ended up being the best, but it was me, that guy, and another guy, and so we were cool, and by the end of my freshman year, I was super awesome at ping pong, and I think that, or, or maybe it was halfway through sophomore year it's it's hard for me to really remember the timeline super well but then I think maybe it was halfway through sophomore year a bunch of new students came and they came at once because we had only had I think 125 students when I first started going there and then the school district told us you know you're taking up too much of a budget we're gonna have to reduce your budget and they made a compromise where we would have to take in a bunch more students. And so all these new students came in at once and they weren't properly vetted. Like we used to always vet the students and have them talk to a number of students and teachers so that they properly understood the environment to decide if they actually wanted to go to the high school and everything. But these students like They didn't, I think, get much of that treatment, so they didn't really quite understand what type of environment that they were at, like that this was very much not different, that that, that it was very much different than other high schools. So there I was, the totally gay, totally popular ping pong champion. (laughs) Right. And I'd be by the ping pong table all the time after class or in between classes because it was fun. It was my thing. And these two new students came to play me and I was fine with that. I would play anyone because I could beat anyone. Nobody ever beat me two out of three, you know? And so 
they came up and one of them decided to play against me and within the first you know five points which i probably got all of they started to realize i was dramatically better than them you know and i was i was doing kind of gay little like oh yeah type things when i would get points so i think that that really bugged them because I was maybe a little bit cocky and gay at the same time and beating the one kid that was playing against me. So they started making fun of how gay I was. And I was like, oh, yeah, well, the thing about that, <laughs> you know, like they were like, oh, you act like a maggot. And I was like, oh, well, I am. I'm actually gay. And they were like, oh my god, you admitted it! Oh, that's so funny! And I was like, no, no, I mean, I'm actually an open homosexual. And they were like, oh my god, he's crazy! They, they had no concept that there were actually a bunch of openly homosexual students at the school. And so they, they went on like that really egregiously until they were like laughing with each other walking away as if they had the last laugh it was kind of this really you know what it reminds me of is it reminds me of when you talk to those totally brainwashed blue pill people that think that you know they would still think that russia gate is a thing and you're trying to explain how it's not and then they're just laughing like this is this will be on facebook they're they're giving you laugh reacts all the time and they're like oh my god take off the tin foil you think that the democrats would just try to set this up this guy is ridiculous they ask your mutual friend how do you even know this guy i mean who is this guy <laughs> you know and they, they they act like they're the ones that are in on some joke and they're just making fun of you but they were doing that to me for being good at ping pong and for being gay so i was very annoyed <laughs> obviously so the next day i went and i found some sort of like poster type size of paper it wasn't super huge but it was big enough and i wrote there were homophobic comments yesterday at the school and i don't approve of it and it left a bunch of spaces for people to sign their names and then i started showing it to people and they were like oh well, what was it like? And I don't remember how much I told the story. I think I properly told the story. I just don't remember exactly what I said. And so the whole the whole page that I had already designated got f totally full of names. And teachers started signing names. The principal started signing names. I added extra pages and those got full. I added like two extra pages. So it became this big thing. And I made one mistake, and this is a pretty egregious mistake, because in my head, I was kind of just thinking, like, I'm going to show the whole school, I'm going to make it clear that this school does not support that type of bullying. And if I were to have just done that, that would have been totally fine, because, you know, it would have made, I would have made my point, and that would have been that. But everybody started asking me, oh, yeah? who was it? Who did that? And I was like, okay. And then I told everyone and everybody knew. Everybody knew. And then they were actually kind of ostracized. They, they totally didn't really have that many friends for the rest of the thing. And they didn't really properly apologize. They were really weird about it. They eventually asked for some sort of peer mediation, and the, the guy almost, like, threatened me. I swear to God. He was like, oh, just so you know, I asked for this peer mediation. I can think of a lot more ugly things that I could have done. And it's like, oh, no, you wouldn't. Like, first of all, I could beat you up. Like, I could have beaten that guy up. Second of all, if you tried to get some, like, gang of kids to jump me or something that would not end well for you like i was friends with the seniors i was friends with people who you know knew people in their 20s and th like no no you, like you did not you don't have any other backup plan so that didn't really feel all that sincere the agreement that we came to was that i would take down the sign and i don't know maybe they legitimately weren't sorry and maybe they started feeling that 
I bullied them. But I do realize that in a certain sense, I did, because I definitely came out on top. I'm not sad about making an example out of the situation in terms of, I, I don't feel as if it was bad to have a reminder that most of the people at the school didn't approve of that type of thing. Like, that's a fairly fair thing to do. But what I do regret and what I did wrong and what I abused, how I abused my gay privilege was actively spiting the individuals and getting people to essentially almost come after them and be really mean to them. And that was taking it too far. I shouldn't have done that. I was being immature. And if I ever had the opportunity to apologize to the guys, I would do that. Because to be perfectly honest, I think I dramatically messed with their high school education. And then long term, that's not going to make them think highly of gay guys. <laughs> you know, especially not SJW type people that are gay guys, which maybe people shouldn't think highly of them, but maybe it'll make them think that all gay guys are like that and they'll always hate gay guys. And if for me, it was a temporary thing. I stopped being like that in college. And yeah, so that was me abusing my privilege, my privilege of being in a community that supported and respected me for who I was. And I could actually get away with things that other people couldn't. And I did. That's all.